Jeremiah chapter number 39. In the ninth year of Zedekiah king of Judah, being dated, in the tenth month came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and all his army against Jerusalem, and they besieged it. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, the city was broken up. One and a half years. No more food. Just nobody's able to come in or go out. And all the prince, these are the guys giving Daniel a hard time. We've been working. Uh, Jeremiah giving a hard time. We've been reading this in the last few chapters. The king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate. Even Negar Sharizer, Sham Agar Nebo, Sarkism, I mean Shar. Sizkim, Rab Sarsis, Niagar Shazizer, Robert, I mean, what's the name of the name? Ragmag. Ragmag. Ragmag's time for dinner! With all the residue of the prince of the king of Babylon. There he is. Here he is. 38 chapters. And it came to pass that when Zedekiah the king of remember we read last chapter? If you were to do right, the city would be spared. And it came to pass that when Zedekiah the king of Judah saw them and all the men of war, then they fled and went forth out of the city by night. Now this is the thing we're going to see in the Ezekiel study. Where I believe God tells Ezekiel, take your your backpack, either blind your eyes, blindfold your eyes, or close your eyes and go through the wall. This is the scene right here. It's the middle of the night. And listen, they didn't have street lights. They didn't have neon. They didn't have electricity lights. When these guys leave the city, it is pitch dark. Went forth out of the city by night, by the way of the king's garden, by the gate betwixt the two walls, and he went out the way of the plain. Exactly as Jeremiah says, exactly as Ezekiel said. But the Chaldeans' army pursued after them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of, of Jericho, the cursed city. So he runs from Jerusalem. To the plains of Jericho, and that's like kind of a like a, a southeastern run. And when they had taken him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar. Remember, remember Jeremiah said, "You're going to see eye to eye. You're going to speak mouth to mouth." Where is his false prophets? I believe Jeremiah said last night. There's going to be peace in the land, and we're going to destroy Babylon. Really? King of Babylon to Ribla in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. Come on, where's your false prophets, man? Where's your religion? Then the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah and Ribla before his eyes. Also the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of, Jer of Judah. This all could have been prevented by chapter 38 that we read last night. Entitled The Wimpy King. Or something like that. Now that wasn't bad enough. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with chains to carry him to Babylon. So the last thing Zedekiah ever sees is he sees the king of Babylon killing his son and having his eyes poked out. And his last words that we read in the, in the Bible was he's speaking to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah says, get right. I'm afraid of the people. And the Chaldeans burned the king's house. And the houses of the people. With fire. And break down the walls of Jerusalem. This is what's reported to Nehemiah. Then never... Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away the captive into Babylon, the remnant of the people that remained in the city, 
And those that fell away, those that came to him, say, we surrender. That fell to him with the rest of the people that remained. But never they are again. The captain of the guard left of the poor of the people, which had nothing in the land of Judah, and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. Look at that. There are some people that got to dwell in the land. The poor people. You know, they were the ones that never got the right just, justice. They were the fatherless and the widows that never got what they should have gotten. And Babylon King says, hey, there's a vineyard over there. Yeah, it's yours. Woo. There's an orchard over there. Yeah, it's yours. And you would probably assume that these poor people worship God and try to do right. Because they get a blessing. And it's not said. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to read his name. The captain of guard saying, now watch this. this is, the subject now becomes Jeremiah. Take him. Uh-oh. And look well to him. Ooh. All the royalty has been taken to Babylon, have been made eunuchs, or they have been killed, and one of them had their eyes poked out. Take Jeremiah. Where's Jeremiah? He's protected in the jail, remember? And look well to him. And do him no harm. But do unto him even as he shall say unto thee. Now we're coming up in our family Bible reading in Daniel about Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar gets right with God. You wonder why he gets right with God? God told him, he says, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, yes. Jeremiah is in a prison house over there. Okay. How am I going to know Jeremiah? He's going to be the only one that's alive. And I, you better treat him well. Okay. Nebuchadnezzar does everything that God tells him to do. He falls into sin, yes. But he obeys God. And yes, he, he, he gets the cursing of the curse upon the Jews. But his nation... And we're going to read about this king who's going to get right and proclaim God is God. And then you're never going to hear from him again. And there's possibly a fact that I believe, which doesn't matter what I believe, that you're going to see Nebuchadnezzar in heaven one day. Because the kingdom falls, the curse that, that curses the Jews falls upon his son. Take him, and look well to him, and do him no harm, but do unto him as he shall say unto thee. He speaks for God. You better listen to him. Doesn't he listen to Daniel? Doesn't he listen to Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo? So Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, sent Nebuchadnezzar, Rabbisaris and Nigal Sherazire, Ragbag, and all the king, and all the king of Babylon's princes. Even they sent and took Jeremiah out of court of prison protection, and committed him unto Gedaliah the son of Ahiakim, the son of Shiphon, that he should carry him home, so he dwelt among the people. Jeremiah gets a home, he gets life, he gets You ever wonder if that word ever got back to, to Zedekiah? To the grapevine? Did you hear Jeremiah? <laughs> yeah, Jeremiah. He's living with the royalty in, in, in Judah, Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar gave a charge and he's living with those that are, that are in charge in Judah. He's doing well. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, All right, this, we, we do a little time warp back before Nebuchadnezzar comes in. We're back to around, we're between chapter 38, verse 28, and chapter 39, verse 1. Somewhere between this time. Go and speak to Ebed-Emelech, the Ethiopian. Remember who he was? 
he helped Je uh, Jeremiah get out of that mire, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring my words upon this city for evil. Again, the result from sin. And not for good. Can you imagine Bill like just sitting there like shaking his boots? And they shall be accomplished in that day before thee. We just read it. So this is still a prophecy. It hasn't happened yet, even though it's in chapter 39. But I will deliver thee in, the, in that day, saith the Lord, and thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men of whom thou art afraid. Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, is fearing, God said, the Babylonians, the Chaldeans. And God says, because you helped my prophet, you helped my, the man that, that is listening to me, you have to have some fear, at least, of God to try to spare this man's life. Those people that you're afraid of, don't worry about it. For I, God, will surely deliver thee. And thou shalt not fall by the sword. But thy life shall be for a prey unto thee. The only thing you're going to get out of this war, this battle, your life. Look what God says. Because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord. Now we're not told if Jeremiah had reflected on this guy's life. We're not told if this guy ever just, just feared the Lord the entire his life. But we, we come to the end of the, the conclusion of this chapter. The city is destroyed. It's ruckus. The, the royalty has been killed. One guy has had his eyes poked out. And we conclude the entire chapter with, one guy trusted in the Lord. Saith the Lord. And we close the chapter. And we'll pick up in chapter 40 to 42. We'll pick up about the people being in the land of captivity. But look how it's closed so far. And we'll read about it again in 1552. But it, it closes the chapter off. There was at least one man that feared God. And trusted God. And helped a man of God. And we have no idea if Jeremiah had any influence or if this guy just was old. We don't know anything about this guy. He's an Ethiopian. He's a eunuch. He was in the king's palace. And he lived amongst wicked men. Let's look, let's look back to what it said the other night. Uh, 37.2 But neither he, the king, nor his servants, nor the people of the land, did hearken unto the words of the Lord, which he spake by the prophet Jeremiah. This guy, and we go to... Where does he show up? Verse 7 And when ebed Meletic, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house here's a guy that served in the king's house with everybody around him that was wicked and yet he loved the Lord and trusted the Lord some way somehow how long we don't know which gives you no excuse to say I couldn't do right I can't get right I am a product of, of being born in a bad situation. I am a product of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So is this Ethiopian eunuch. I wonder if Daniel knew him. I wonder if word got back to, to Babylon. Uh, and Ben Malek, the Ethiopian. One of that was in among the grave lines of uh, Babylon. And Daniel, hey, I wonder if Daniel knew who this guy was. I wonder if Daniel had, wait a minute. If Daniel was right in the eyes of God, right, and he was, didn't he live in the same places that Ben Malek lived? Or Ben, whatever his name is, the Ethiopian? So there is this guy, and there are four more from the book of Daniel that we learned that do right by God. 
even amongst a whole group of people, population, they're doing wrong. You can't say your situation makes you who you are. You can rise above it. You've got to want to do right. Look how Jeremiah was rewarded. The army comes in. What does Jeremiah say through the whole entire book, the 38 chapters? The sword. The famine. The pestilence. The sword. The famine. And the pestilence. The sword. The famine. And the pestilence. Well, where is Jeremiah when we last read him? He's in a prison. He has no more food. The bread is gone. It's a place of disease. It's not a clean, healthy place to be in. Not especially they just stuck him into mire. The army is now in the city. Man, if they're going to kill anybody, it would be anybody sitting in jail. He'd be a good, likely target. Yet the doors are open. They brush the dust, dust off him. Say, what has God got to say for us? Here's the leader of the, of the nation now. Go dwell with him. And chapter 40 is a very great comical thing that we will read, Lord willing, and study, Lord willing. And we'll find out that Jeremiah did have some despair. He did have some moments that maybe I am a false prophet. Maybe I am, because we're going to learn in chapter 40 that God encouraged Jeremiah. But do you realize when the Babylonians came to Jeremiah's jail cell in chapter 39, verse 14, of all the blood that was shed in this city, Jeremiah 39, 14 proved Jeremiah to be a proper prophet of God. As he steps out of that prison and wipes the dust and the, and the, the, the gum out of his eyes, he steps out of that prison, it's probably dark, and he's rubbing his eyes, trying to get used to the sunlight. He opens up his eyes, and all he can see is smoke and fire and dead bodies. Maybe he saw a few that he even knew. And as much as we've read and studied Jeremiah, you cannot say he could not shed a cheer for him. Because of the evil that they have done. Jeremiah did all he could for them not to happen what has happened. You got to realize when you come to a point in your Christian life, you tried everything you can for the loss. Your family, your co-workers. And they die and they go to hell. Man, you just come out of that jailhouse, you just rub your eyes. Open up, see the destruction, and you're carried off with the kings in charge. We the great white throne judgment. We're going to see those flames. We're going to see that smoke. We're going to be called up for those who are going to be cast into the lake of fire. I hope we've done all we can, like Jeremiah. As we walk off, we'll probably be comforted by the angel, other saints in the Lord. As death and destruction will play out before the great white throne judgment. But anybody that God casts into hell, into the lake of fire, if you have done all you could, if you are a soldier of one in the Lord, if you have done all you could, and they are without excuse, you can't weep.
then Jeremiah is called a weeping prophet. And when we get to Lamentation, is Jeremiah out of his own mouth did all he could. He preached to the king. He preached to the princes. He preached to the priests. He preached to the people. It was their fault. 38 chapters. Thirty-eight chapters and one man we read trusted in the Lord besides Jeremiah. That says a lot. How far will America fall before God does anything? One man? Let's see. Let's look at one man. Adam was one man, wasn't he? Wasn't Noah just one man? Yeah, I know there were three sons, but who did God respect? It? Wasn't Abraham just one man? Look at all the sons he and daughters that he has today. Wasn't Jesus Christ just one man? Wasn't Ezra just one man? Moses was one man. America is falling the way of Judah. That, that's one thing I can say 100%. We are going the ways of Judah. We're, we're not. We're there. The churches are falling quick. We close chapter 39 where there are two men recorded to be right in the Lord. And that's it. And everything around is destroyed. Few poor people. But we're not read, we're not told. I, we would read into the extra into the verse, or I would say they were saved. They said they left the poor of the people. They may not have been Jews. They may have been the Rechabite. We don't know. I can't add more to the verse. All it says he left the poor of the people. But the people you put it soon be Jews. But there is Jeremiah, and Jeremiah is given the word by God. Go over there, speak to Imbemelech, the Ethiopian, and tell him, you know what? You feared them? Don't fear them. You're coming out with just your life. What does that sound like? What man came out with just his life and nothing else? Lie. Out of what? What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? What happened to those cities? Verse 8. The Chaldeans burned the king's house, the houses of the people with fire. Isn't that what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah in the neighboring city? The place went up in flames. And Sodom and Gomorrah, the sin wasn't just sodomy, the Bible said. Pride. Abundance of idolatry, abundance of leisure. Exactly where America is today. And when we get to Nebuchadnezzar and his golden image with all forms of the music, America is already there. Rock concerts, uh, any kind of performance has to have music and all kinds of dancing and, and hoopla going on. But the king has been taken. The people have been taken. And the city is destroyed with fire. Jeremiah walks out of the prison. Where are the false prophets? Dead. 
Jeremiah walks out of that prison house. He's rubbing his eyes. And he's not happy, but you know what? He is a true prophet of God because everything he said came to pass. And Jeremiah did all he could. Some people will not do what God told them to do. And you'll watch as their lives will be destroyed and end up burnt up. But the man of God will hold firm and strong and still be standing. You know, we don't ever read Jeremiah dying. We know he died. But we don't ever read about him. Jeremiah is a picture of a Christian. I don't think he ever says once, Jeremiah, that this is the place where you live. This is your home. This is, you know. Jeremiah was a Levite. He had no inheritance in the land. You do know that, right? You do know that Revelation chapter 1 calls us priests. We don't have no inheritance in the land. The Bible says the Lord is our inheritance. I may be made in America by my parents. But my home is New Jerusalem. I'll even step, I'm not made in America. I'm made by God. I was only born in America. But there are people who are born in China. There are people born in Sierra Leone. There are people born in France. There are people born all over this world. And no matter what the conditions they live in, they are serving God. So what's, what makes American more Americans should have more of a chance to serve the Lord, and we don't. 